Hello and welcome along. Uh, today on Dusty Cove, we're going to be setting up our cedar here to uh, to seed. I think we're probably going to get it started on field 40. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to seed yet. I need to double check and, uh, and have a look through. Uh, but yeah, we need to fill it up with seed first, which I think is down here. I'm correct. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to go and do some mowing. So here's our, yeah, here we go. Fertilizer uh, is there. So I don't think, no. There's no seed there. Where is the seed? I put the mower in completely the wrong place. Oh, there's our seed. Right, there we go. So, yeah, we're going to fill this up. And once we've done that and got it started. Uh, right, while this is doing. Oh, this is going to be. Yeah, this is not going to be good. Now, the reason why we're doing some mowing is because we're about to go into minus figures on the numbers. On, on the uh, on the amount of money we've got, so we need to get working on some money in. Uh, we have uh, a lot of wheat in storage. We've got no barley, uh, no sunflowers, no soybeans, and no corn. So we're going to start with uh, getting some barley in on this field. Oh, wow. <laughs> 626. That's a lot of seed cost. But we have at least got some seed. But now we need to get course play running on here. go barley and we are going to do field work uh, sorry we're going to do fertilizing and seeding uh, we are looking at field 40 there we go uh, six meters will take it down slightly just to try and make it get the corners and make it miss less. So five and a half meters. Starting corner. We are in the southwest. We want it going east. Uh, we don't want automatic returns. First point. There we go. Right. So let's kind of get that and have a look. That looks good. Uh... Yeah, it does kind of leave us down the other end. Not ideal, but that will that will work for what for now. Uh, first waypoint drive course. So we'll leave that going on that, and we're gonna jump out and just run back this way and go and grab our mower. So we have the, uh, we do still have our trailer full of bales. I need to un unload that from last time. For this, we are going to do, we're going to basically mow field two and turn all of this into silage. Uh, the reason for that is because... I need to generate some cash. So the easiest way for us to generate cash at the moment is to get this mode and uh, and start turning it into. Uh, oop, that's the wrong bit. Start turning it into silage. Now whether that's silage bales or uh, or uh, or just silage for the BGA. I'm not sure. Silage bales do pay fairly well. Uh, but 
we would have to hire the equipment for that. And of course, we don't have the money to do anything at the moment. So, yeah, I don't think we have the money to hire. Well, I don't think we can get the money to hire that. We could sell some crop. I mean, that's the thing. We do have crop uh, in storage that we could sell. So from that point of view, it's very doable. But we're, uh, we need to, yeah, we need to get the, uh, the money in to do this. And, uh, and let alone getting our cows. I mean, this is the thing. At the moment, we're trying to build towards getting the cows. Uh, because cows very much can make our map self-sufficient. Can make it so that uh, each day we cover all our costs. Uh, but we've got to buy them in the first place. So, there is that. We're going to do this half of the field first. Um, we'll do the headlands first so that we destroy less of the crop. In this case, crop being grass. Uh, it was a question I've seen, uh, I seen come up on SimStream, actually. Is uh, or seems uh, sim one of Sim's videos uh, where actually he was doing grass on this field as well. Uh, where uh, basically uh, he was asking what, uh, why, why do you do the headlands first, um, especially when uh, wind rowing and um, and bailing. And, uh, and the simple answer to that is it destroys less of what you're trying to to do it destroys less of the uh, so in the case of bailing uh, you, you do the headlands first so that while you're turning doing your your strips you don't uh, compact your grass or your straw and therefore damage what you're trying to get baled and make it harder for the baler to pick up uh, of course when you're mowing you uh, you want to destroy uh, less of the crop that you're on. You want to destroy less of the grass and uh, and push it uh, and not push it down because uh, again, you you then can't get at it with the mower. And, uh, and yeah, when you're wind rowing, you want to do the headlands first so that you're able to, uh, you're, you're not pushing it about too much with the wind rower and, uh, and, and causing str uh, strangers with the grass itself. So, yeah. General, uh, general rule I've always seen in farming is if you're harvesting something, or collecting something you do the headlands first if you are seeding or cultivating or plowing or, or doing field work like that then you do the headlands last and that way you preserve as much of what you're trying to do as possible and that's really a very long-winded way of saying hey we're doing the headlands first <laughs> right we're only going to do a couple of rounds on the headlands and then we're going to go up and down get this all cut and get this uh, get this making us some money this tractor to take the full butterfly setup. Uh, that would be interesting. And we have got the we have got fields large enough to do it. Maybe our tractors are reverse drive, so we could actually get the Lely mowers from that point of view.
Right, so that's the long part of the field over. Uh, we've just got this last little bit to do, and then we're going to get our wind rower and, uh, and start rowing this up. <clears throat> it should be a case of... I, I, I think I'm going to see if I've got a uh, forage wagon. If I've got a forage wagon, then I think we might take this straight to the uh, BGA. Uh, if I don't, then I think we might bail it up and get a uh, and get a bale wrapper. Uh, so it really depends on what we have because we are nicely, well, nicely, we are in the minus figures now. So we are going to have to sell some crop, I think, to bring us back up. Uh, but we do have crop to sell. We do have things to sell. So that's that's not the end of the world to be in minus figures. But we want to try and get out of it as quickly as possible. Uh, and we're not without assets to do it, so, uh, yeah. I don't think the BGA will necessarily pay more. It's just that we don't have to hire anything to do it if we've got a forage wagon. But then I'm not 100% sure we have one. We should have one, because otherwise it's, uh, it's going to be very difficult for us to feed the sheep. So there's normally one kicking around. Uh, either way, we've got a wind row first, so there is that. I'll go in cab for a minute, I think. Add a little bit of variety. And, uh, and yeah, with the steering wheel, it's quite nice to be in here. So yeah, hopefully we have a forage wagon. Hopefully we can co just collect this up and go and tip at the BGA. Uh, I have been sort of just trying to tip it all in the cows one here, but perfectly honest, we probably would have been better off tipping all of this, uh, all our chaff and our silage at the VGA in the first place. But that's okay. We will get to work on that and get it done on that end. That's going quite nicely there. Right. And round. Back. There we go. So probably two, three more strips to go, I think. And then that will be done. And we'll all be clear. So we do have, we've got all our tractors working at the moment because our, uh, our, our other T7, the big one, that's doing ploughing down the other end at the moment, ploughing one of our fields. So it's, uh, yeah, it's all go on the farm at the moment, which is good. It's good to have everything working, but that's part of the reason why we seem to be losing money very quickly because we have two hired workers going, doing jobs. While we're doing this, yeah, yeah, one more strip, I think. Maybe two. Right, no, it's going to be two. There we go. I remember why I preferred it like this because the the butterfly mowers, I ca it's you kind of plunge into the middle of it. Right, we'll get that a little tuft on the way back. Because we need to go and get these last little bits. Right there we go. Okay, so I'll pick these up, turn them off, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these off at the side of the field, because I'm going to need them for the other half later. I want to drop them on the roadway here. That way, we're not going to destroy any of the grass. 
Actually, we'll just, I know I would stop them. We'll drop them here like this. At the edge of the field. On this piece of grass. That way we are doing as little damage to the grass we actually want to cut as possible. Grab the wind rope, which is through here. We may not know. We, we, mm. If we don't have a forage wagon, we might have a forage header for our. Um, For our uh, forage, uh, forage harvester. So it could be that. I think we'll have to see. Right, we want to get this unfolded, hopefully without hitting the gate post and damaging it. Yeah, there we go. We're all good. And away we go. So I'm just going to pull that bit in first, and then, yeah, headlands first, headlands first. There we go. Right, so, headlands first. This is one of those maps where I could possibly use a larger one of these. larger one of these would work. Ooh, like that. I guess there's a few shots to work with. Right, round we go. But we'll have a look at the end and see what we have in the way of uh, forage wagons and stuff to pick up. It's a bit strange. I think we're going to do two headlands on this. Uh, that will give us something to work with. I might do the other half of this field off camera and then what we can do is we can collect that all up at the same time. Alright, let's be careful. I want to catch on the rocks. There we go. I do like that. This is my. This is definitely my favourite uh, rake in the game. Just simply because the single, the single is uh, just takes too long to do anything, and the uh, the bigger ones are tend to be too big in general. Tend to cause issues from that point of view. Right, we're going to rake this straight into this bit there. We'll pick that up and turn it off because we don't want it destroying our nicely done row. And then we'll do one more headland. So. so that we have a good turning area and, uh, and we get rid of the thinner bit down the end here. That will clear. That will clear out most of the thinness, where it causes us trouble. 
And something I've seen the last couple of days, which I found really interesting and, and I want to test out, is that apparently you can weed uh, things like grass back into the field, uh, which is amazing. So I'm, I'm really interested to try that out, see if that makes a difference. Because we don't have a weeder on this map at the moment. But uh, yeah, that would be that would be really interesting to try out. There's a lot of there's still a lot of corn on this map. And because this is this is a, a standard let's say we're not using seasons on here, that corn will be available for a very long time. I know I want to get cows and sheep on it, sheep on here. I'm not sure about pigs at the moment. Uh, we've, we've not set up really to handle the pigs at the moment, and we've kind of been doing um, rather than getting uh, corn in, which would be useful to feed the pigs. Oh, I missed a bit in the corner. Uh, we've been uh, chaffing it instead using the forage harvester. So it's not. I did get to the point where I was debating whether I wanted to do animals on this map at all, but I really quite like the setup of the cows here. So I want to give those a go. Absolutely. Right, so we are coming into the corner. Yeah. So we will lift this up, turn it off, and reverse. Try and drive over our rows as little as possible, because as I say, we don't want to do we want to do as little damage to what we're trying to achieve as possible. And I'll go up and down now. all rowed up. Yeah, it's quicker doing the wind rowing than it is doing the mowing. You don't need to uh, to zoom past this or zoom through this or time lapse this. Because it's only about well, it's only sort of two, three rows to get into that. And it does have a does have a nice wide reach this wind rat. Right? little chunk at the end is a bit weird. We must turn sharply when we're doing the headlands. It's caused that issue. It's thrown us out a little bit overall because now I'm uh, now I've got a little bit of a, a wonk at the end. Which is not the end of the world, but it just makes things just that little bit more difficult. Road, yeah, never mind. There we go. Slightly surprised if I haven't got a forage header for the uh, for the forage harvester. That would seem to be a little bit of an oversight in my setup, but we'll see. And that might be a nice way to go. It's a little bit different. Not something we, uh, we tend to do a lot in, in 
these videos and it would be a, a bit of a change from what everybody else is doing. And we can set up course play to do the karting for that as well. See, that's why you tend to turn them off when you're doing a turn because otherwise it can catch it a little bit. It shouldn't do, but it can do. Yeah, I'm not, not worried about the really little bit. and turn there we go Last little bit. Let's row that up. Okay. So we'll turn that off and fold it up. I need my lights on. There we go. Uh, and that's where we're going to leave it. So uh, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please give it a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. And for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel. I will see you next time. Goodbye.